God bless, God bless. How's everybody doing out there in YouTube city? So, I just wanted to uh, talk on a subject called transition. You know, in order, in order to even become a, a Christian, uh, the subject of becoming a Christian has to do with God choosing you, bringing you into the beloved because you asked Him to. And uh, we 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 ask Him through the Bible. The Bible, we, we go by what the Bible says And the Bible says that if you believe That Jesus Christ died on the cross And rose from the third day That you shall be saved So then you, you grab the Bible Because the Bible says that the, the heaven and earth can pass away But that God's word will never pass away So he holds his, his word And the scriptures Near and dear to his heart It's like it's So 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 important to God that his word be carried out so that when we carry when, when we read the scriptures you know we can apply those scriptures and understand that God does not lie so with that said I just wanted to say that on the subject of transition uh, the blood of Jesus Christ has paid for the for the transition to, to you know the, the transaction there is that the blood of Jesus Christ paid for your redemption that's the transaction the transition has to do with you accepting the transaction no transaction can be made unless there the two parties are in agreement okay in order to do covenant with God a pact with God vows with God come in communion with God you must be in agreement with God and what the word of God So That's why the word of God is so important It's because in order to become One with God And be part of His chosen generation His royal priesthood, his holy nation His purchased people In, or, in order to become that We need to say yes To what he says yes to And say no to what he says no to So that we can become one with him so then the Bible itself is a living book and it reads you and when you open up that book the scriptures you'll notice that the words they speak to you on a different level than any other book could ever speak to you it's almost personal it's almost like it knows about you the book knows you and it's calling you out on certain things it's telling you it's telling you, you know, to get right. The Bible, it, it refers, the scriptures say that it's like a dividing sword. It's a sword that divides. You know, it will, it will hurt. The truth sometimes does hurt when you're told the truth. Sometimes it stings. But, I, but, but the Bible puts it to you like this. You know, there's an enemy that gives you kisses, but then stabs you in the back. And then there's a friend that tells you the truth. And it, it, it shows you how, how a friend will tell you the truth and sometimes it'll sting. But it shows you the deception of an enemy, how they kiss you with their words. But they're lying to you. They're deceiving you. So in the in the long run, in the long run, you're misled by the kisses. Right? The Bible has changed my life. It's transformed me. The Bible has rebuked me. <laughs> It has chastised me. It has um, corrected me. And it's got me in fellowship with God. Meaning, I had to leave my ways to become one with the Father. The Bible was correcting me because it was saying, you're not in line with me. And the Bible is like a mirror. It's a reflection. The law of God is like a mirror 
to show you your reflection of where you're at with God. Otherwise, you wouldn't even know. We can easily be deceived. So many people are. Because in our imagination, we often draw up God to be one way. But you don't have to imagine God to be any way. Just read the scriptures and you'll get the authentic version of who He is. Because He draws Himself as who He is. And I just don't want people be, to be misled. There's deceiving spirits out there. The Bible says to be careful with them. The deceiving spirits tell you what you want to hear only to keep you captive in the place where they have you, right? So that you don't search for the truth and, and break free and become one with God and walk in your destiny. The deceiving spirits are there to thwart the plans of God in your life. To point in the wrong direction. And say it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. Don't worry about this or that. God has me making this video right now. And I... And the video has to do with his policy, his way, not your way, not my way, his way. Jesus referred to himself as, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I, I often see Christians, and I was one of these too. I was one of these for a long time, where I felt like God, even though I wouldn't say this out loud, through my actions, it was almost like God worked for me. And what that means is that it's like, oh, I prayed. Now it's your turn to move. Oh, I asked you. Now, where is it? Like if he works for me or something like that. God does answer prayers. He is good. He's faithful. He's loving. But we forget that God is alive. He's, he's not a robot not a machine he has feelings and uh, he wants friendship with us he wants fellowship with us He's, he wants to know us intimately and passionately he wants that more than anything else that's, that's the goal for God to have you know him and for him to know you So God has different sides to him. The Bible refers to God as God is love. So yes, he is love. How do we know he's love? Well, we know he's love because he's righteous and holy. And in being that, then he has to judge. He has to judge by default because he's, uh, because he's the judge of the world. Right? Uh, God is he's love. Um... So because he's loving, he has to give uh, judgment to those that have, they, they have transgressed his law. And by way of doing that, people get relief. Uh, uh, you know, God has mercy and grace. But we must become one with him. In the Bible Not to do that Is to do yourself A disservice And a dishonor The best place you can be Is with God The best place you can be Is to be In the hands of God In the will of God Doing the things of God That's the best place you can be Because there's no greater Joy and honor than to live out the life that he intended for you to live which is far greater than any one that you can come up with because God loves you so much he's chosen the, the greatest life for you out of all the different lives that you can choose from he's chose the supreme one 
because he loves you. So your best place is with him. The worst place is hell. Hell is a place without God. Okay? Because the people that rejected God, that's what they get. They get a place without God. They rejected him. Well, now they live without him for eternity. So God extends his mercy and his grace knocking on everybody's door not pushing himself upon anybody not forcing himself but lovingly and mercifully and gently inviting everyone into relationship and covenant with him it's up to us for, for us to say yes now with that comes challenges testing with that comes a new way of lifestyle but it's it exceeds the world lifestyle than any anybody can uh, indulge in. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. The way that seems right to a man is they they have these ears that have everything to do with pleasure. It's like wherever pleasure is at, that's where I want to be. That's the way that seems right to a man. Put me in the center of pleasure and keep me there. And okay? it tickles the ears. It sounds right, it looks right, it feels right. The book of Ecclesiastes says that it's better to be in a house of mourning than a house of feasting. And that first time I read that, I was insulted. I felt like what? How does that make any sense? A house of mourning. Like like if you're in a funeral home, it's better to be there than a house of feasting, like a party. I had a lot of questions I didn't understand. So then I started to grow. I kept reading. And although I was insulted, I felt like I don't believe it. I'm not in agreement with that, but I'm going to keep reading. And then something magical happens, if I can use that word, magical, even though it's not. Let's not get into that. You know, something awesome happens uh, where, as you keep reading, God, you know, He uh, blesses you with insight, revelation. He blesses you with discernment and understanding because He sees your hunger. He sees your thirst. He sees you are wanting to grow. And so he encourages that. And so he gives you understanding. And so when he gave me understanding, this is what he told me. He said, the reason why it's better to be in a house of mourning rather than a house of feasting is because what happens in a house of feasting? They're drinking. You know, usually they're drinking. And what happens when you drink? Usually there's quarreling. A word that they use in the Bible, quarreling. Another word for quarreling is like this this argumentative or fighting or just things go wrong, right? We've seen, we've been to those parties where people are drinking, they get they get belligerent, they get rowdy, they get grouchy, they they they, they start stuff. And and this is a house of feasting. Right? And in a house of feasting also, everybody's selfish. They're for themselves. Look how many points there is to this. God God is wiser than any. So when he gives one thing, he's really putting a thousand things into that one thing. So he's like, well, there's quarreling, but then there's also, they're selfish. They're all for themselves. You know, how they, how, you know, pleasure for themselves. They're not thinking about the next person. Some people get their their wallet stolen. Other people uh, make bad decisions, uh, lose their virginity, or get raped because they fell asleep on the couch. And then a drunk guy looked at the woman asleep on the couch and said, oh, you know, nobody's around. Look how many things happen in the house of feasting. I've heard stories of these things happening when I was growing up. It's not 
this foreign story of oh no way that doesn't happen yes it happens and it happens frequently I've I used to uh, get into a lot of stupid things never never did that in terms of uh, the rape thing but I did steal from other people that were um, in a house of feasting back in the day before I knew Jesus if you dropped your wallet you wouldn't see your wallet ever again because it was in my pocket if you dropped your phone likewise it was in my pocket so that was just the end of that and that would all happen in a house of feast in a house of feasting you know what else would happen in the house of feasting that I would attend to gossip slander um, just gambling a lot of things like that things that God is not into and you know so many other things right so oh, that's just defining house of feast right well what, what happens in a house of mourning I'll tell you what happened in the house of mourning and when my father died my grandmother from both sides my mom's dad and my mom's mom Wait, my dad's mom and my mom's mom my grandma's from both sides they would never talk they never liked each other my whole life they never talked but when my dad died one of my grandmothers from my mom's side went and kissed the other grandmother on my dad's side on the forehead and gave her condolences and they made amends that day this is happening in the house of mourning people's guards are down their walls are down they're mourning they're broken they're weeping they're crying so it opens up the door for people to console them, hug them, help them, love them, bless them. It opens up the door for love to take place, which that's what God is all about, love. It opens the door for reconciliation. People, people that have been in fights for a long time, they talk in funeral homes. You, 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 family members you haven't seen in years, you've seen them in funeral homes and you catch up and you talk and you, you share numbers and you keep in contact all because the house of mourning brought you together and so many other ways uh, so many other things and so that's what God told me when I read Ecclesiastes he, you know the things of this world that we exalt as humans they're detestable before God so whatever you can think about that humans put up on a pedestal say like money as an example people put money on a pedestal um, anything that humans say you can say like well, you know you put on it's a detestable before God that's Bible that's not my words that's Bible and then you know the things that this world detest usually are the things that God is for because people forget that the devil is the God of this world Bible again that's not my words I don't want him to be the God of this world but the Bible says he is and he blinds the eyes of the unbelievers so the people that that want to go and, and seek out God the devil has them blinded that's why so many people they don't come to God they don't come to the cross they don't feel God, they don't see God, they don't hear God all because they think the devil has blinded them and they think that they have the better portion of life and they're like, oh, on this side I have feasting, oh, on this side I, 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 get, I drink, I smoke, I have sex I'm free but then the Bible you know is, is Jesus came to set the captives free Right? And anybody that's a slave to sin, sin, sin equals death. So they're dying spiritually, right? So then they acquire within all this liberty to go and sell themselves to the world, fornicating and this and that. So essentially, you're giving yourself away, and that's where the gospel comes in. That's where God comes and reconciles you and fixes you and heals you because sin produces mental illness and demons okay 
it produces depression and suicidal thoughts. It produces uh, isolation and this emptiness on the inside. Darkness is the best friend of the person that is living in sin. They're in darkness. So anytime they're around somebody that has the light, that's with Jesus, they get uncomfortable. Because the light and darkness, what, what, what does light do to darkness? It extinguishes it. It exposes it. So they get insecure. So you want people that are living in darkness, they don't want to go to the church because the church is full of light. That's for the good people. I'm not good. These used to be my words. But I had no idea when I got to church, you know what I found out? I had no idea that the church is full of prostitutes. It was full of ex-gang members, full of drug addicts. They've been washed clean, cleansed, and they've been rehabilitated into a new creation. And now they're a new person. They lived that life for a long time. And they said, man, this, is, this ain't it. I was lied to. I thought that I thought that this thing would, because uh, you know the way that it works is that in the, it's like one of those. One of those things that, like, I, I'll I'll describe it to you like this: like cotton candy. Sin is sweet. That's why people do it. It's sweet to the taste, you know, but it's sour when you swallow it. Like it. Make, it, it makes you bitter. <sighs> so what I'm trying to say is, is that when people watch pornography, it's gratifying to them. It's sweet. But afterwards, they feel the after effects of guilt, shame, and they feel condemnation. They feel, they feel dirty and this and that. Now, that is what I mean to say. It it, it, become, it goes in sweet, but it then becomes bitter. So God's like, well, that's how it is with pleasure. That's how it is with this world, right? The good things, right, like that you want, like you taste it, but it go, but after the after effects, like fast money and and you know fornicating, just go, go with the first uh, person you see and have sex with them, etc. Um, it, it, the after effects is is like is that part that, that that feels like man I wish I hadn't done that it's that uh guilt it's that your conscience telling you ah you know and God's life is simple it's slow slowed down and it treasures the small moments in life you pick up the small little moments that the world considers to be like ah you know how they say stop and smell the flowers right it's like those small little family moments those small little uh sunsets that you you see the sun going down you're drinking a cup of coffee those those uh you know board games or whatever you play with family or those moments at uh worship you feeling god's presence and you know, you're ministering to somebody and in their life just got changed. This is what life is. This is where the essence of, of creation, of God's intended value went to. And in the devil's lifestyle, everything's going so fast. You don't get to stop and smell the road. It's like you go so fast that you're always aiming big. Or a big spectacle, a big monumental experience. And so, in order to get that big experience, people drink a lot, they smoke a lot, they do a lot of drugs because the more they, they're out of it, the bigger the experience is for them. And it, it backfires every, every time. Uh, they don't know it, some of them do, but um, they don't know, but they're, you know, each and every time they do drugs, they lose a part of themselves. They're, they're losing, they're burning more brain cells. 
this sci scientifically proven yeah, you're burning brain cells you're destroying your brain right and so in the spiritual sense like the soul is dying right um, the heart is being affected by the choices that that the body's making so both the physical and the spiritual heart right are all, are, are all being affected these are the life choices right and so thanks be to God that he's merciful and graceful and that he wants to come in and clean house and bless you and, and heal you and deliver you and, and bring you back to a place of okay you tasted and you saw that that is not the way now follow the way the truth and the life because this is the way, this is the path. That's deception over there, right? That's anybody that's been over there understands what I'm talking about. Jesus Christ is the best life you can ever have. Period. Within the Lord Jesus Christ, you have everything. Most people just want love. Love. And Jesus offers that in a way where it makes you cry because he's touching just the right spot. You know what I mean? The love of God comes and it heals you from other traumas, right? Removes the, the stain of guilt, shame, and condemnation. He loves you, tells you how awesome you are. How important you are gives you purpose and destiny and says follow me follow me that is a life worth living not not waking up whenever you want going to sleep whenever you want not having any direction in life and everything's a big fat joke just playing games and hurting people and getting hurt in the process and, you know it's just got death written all over it I don't know if this video is going to bless you but I hope it does and we're going to end it there God bless you guys Jesus number one